Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the game where we aim for the obscure and we ignore the obvious. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. Uh, I'm Andrew, this is my son Thomas and we're from Altrincham in Cheshire. Couple number two. I'm Catherine, this is my sister Alison, I'm from Broadstairs and she's from St Neirts in Cambridgeshire. Couple number three. I'm Arkif and this is my wife Shafak and we're both from Rotherham. And finally, couple number four. Hi, Xander, I'm Ian, this is my wife Judith and we're from Barrow and Furness in Cumbria. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thank you very much, all of you. Wonderful to have you here. Warm welcome to the show. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce, a conscientious objector to oblivious conjecture. <laughs> right, please with that one. It's my pointless friend is Richard. Hiya. Hey, everybody. I have to say you are easily pleased. Oh, uh, which is the, the best way to be, right? It is. Yeah. I spend my life in just in absolute paroxysms of pleasure. <laughs> so lovely. Amazing. Um, welcome back to two uh, pairs. Catherine and Addison have been knocked out in round two both times so far. But they're creeping ever nearer us. Oh, they are? I think they're on 4 3 2 now. Piling on the pressure. Uh, unfortunately, yes. it's your last day, so we won't see you on podium one. Now, Arkif, in the, uh, in the first one, got knocked out in uh, round one because uh, Shafat gave us a really lovely, oh, low yeah. answer. And Best Arkif gave us round. the biggest answer you could possibly give us on the board. <laughs> yeah. So, listen, all I'm saying is, Arkif, you've got a little bit of making up to do. <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm saying. And welcome, we've got a, a new Ian. We'd lost an Ian on the last show. We didn't lose him. He just, <laughs> he just won. Don't panic. There's no health and safety issues. <laughs> he won, but he's been immediately replaced by another Ian. So, a new improved Ian, they're calling yes. him. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> uh, thank you. Well, Ian and Pippa got through to the final last time, but they didn't win the jackpot. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, that's well, sneaky. So we add another £1,000 to that. So today's jackpot starts off at £2,250. <laughs> right, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointers. <laughs> just remember, it's always the pair with the highest score at the end of each round that gets eliminated. That's just the thing you have to remember. Best of luck to everybody. Our first category this afternoon is... Celebrity names. Can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... Famous people with alphabetically consecutive initials. Richard? Yes, on each board, we're going to show you seven clues to famous people. Their initials are alphabetically consecutive, if you know what I, I mean. I like that. Uh, but who are they, please? Seven on the first board, seven on the second. So that's uh, 14 in all to have a go at home. That's fun. Oh, I'm thinking of a few. Wondering if they're going to be there. So we're looking for these famous people with their alphabetically consecutive initials. Here they come. First board of seven. 2008 winner of the X Factor, who had a UK number one hit with Hallelujah, A B. Victorian author of novels David Copperfield and Oliver Twist, C D. 17th century architect credited with designing the piazza in Covent Garden, I.J. German fashion designer named art director of the House of Chanel in 1983, K.L. Tennis player who won the first of her nine Wimbledon singles championships in 1978, M.N. Star of the TV series Birds of a Feather with Linda Robson and Leslie Joseph, P.Q. And comedian and writer of TV sitcom Dinner Ladies, V.W. OK, Andrew. Andrew, welcome to Pointless. Thank you. Great to have you here from Cheshire. Cheshire. Tell us all about yourself. Uh, I'm semi-retired. I've been a builder's merchant for the past 20 years as a branch manager. Stepped down earlier this year. You, are you missing it? Uh, I still work three or four days a week. I have nice long weekends, so uh, okay. I can't say I'm missing so, it at you're all. You're not that retired, then. You're <laughs> no, still no, there. Semi, semi-retired. Semi-retired. But, oh, that, oh that, that Friday off. Turn your Thursday into a Friday. Absolutely. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Very nice. Um, who are you going to go for on our board? Uh, well, yeah, I know, I'm glad this has come up. I know a few of those, actually. Um, I think I'll go for the German fashion designer, Karl Lagerfeld. Karl Lagerfeld says, Andrew, let's see how many of our 100 people agree with Andrew. Karl Lagerfeld. Karl Lagerfeld is right. And Dan, that goes to 19. Very well done, indeed. Great start to the round. Uh, very well played, yeah. His cat had a bodyguard. Choquette. Mm. Oh, that's a bit much, isn't it? Mm. Thank you very much, Richard. Now, Catherine, Hello. welcome back. Thank Your you. third and final shot at the pointless jackpot. Mm -hmm. Remind us all about yourself, Catherine. So, um, I live in Broadstairs. Indeed. Um, I do a lot of running, so mm -hmm. it's quite hilly around there, but um, I, I run about six miles a day. I've done five London marathons. 
and about 30 half marathons. I know I don't look like I run, but I do. <laughs> you don't. You never want to look like you run. No, that's there are people true. who look like they run. Very no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, Catherine, what mm. are you going to go for? Well, for a change, I actually know some of them. Uh, <laughs> I'm just wondering which one is going to score the least. I think I'm going to go for Pauline Quirk. Pauline Quirk from yeah. Birds of a Feather. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Pauline Quirk. It's right. That goes down to 32. 32 for Pauline Quirk. Yeah, uh, very well played, Catherine. Yeah, hard to work out what the best scorer on this is going to be, but uh, that's not a bad score, is it? I Pauline guess the Quirk. Q might have made that leap out a bit more. Yes, you're quite right, actually. It's an unusual surname. Anything that yeah. gives people just jogs people's memory, tends yeah. to put the scores up a tiny bit. Thank you very much, Richard. Akif, welcome back. Remind us all about yourself. Uh, I'm originally from New Zealand, moved here at the start of the year, and my claim to fame is that the current New Zealand Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern, once came to my flat warming. How hot must that flat have been after a warming <laughs> she, like to be that? Fair, well, she was, uh, this was a while back, so she was like a first-term young MP for our local area. Was she a friend of yours, friend of one of your house? She was a friend or... of my friend who's now living in London. Wow. So maybe keep on a friend and maybe Jacinda will come pop round? Possibly. <laughs> yes. Akif, what are you going to go for? Now, Karl Lagerfeld was something that my wife had coached me on, so I'm disappointed <laughs> that's been taken. But <laughs> um, I'm going to go for one that I think is going to end up being quite obvious, but there's not many others that I know. I'm going to go for the tennis player. That's Martina Navratilova. Martina Navratilova says, Akif, let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Martina Navratilova. Martina is right. Well, 32 is our high score, 19 is our low. And you're on 20. Look at that, Akif. Very creditable. Yeah, and it's quite a low score, isn't it, for Martina? Yeah. But I suppose it's a long time ago. And again, the initials, it's not like mm. PQ. MN is, is mm. a bit more kind of, you know, kind it of hides slides right in the middle off of the brain the a bit. Spectrum yeah. of the alphabet. Yeah, there it is, in mm. plain sight. Now then, Judith. Hello. Welcome, <laughs> welcome, welcome. Lovely to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. My name's Judith, and I'm from Barrow and Furness in Cumbria. I'm retired. What have you retired from? What did you used to do? I used to be a nurse, and mm. I, my finishing job was actually manager of an NE department. I imagine when that retirement came, it couldn't have come soon enough. Correct. <laughs> oh, not that you didn't give your all, of course. Yeah, and then, yeah I, I, I took early retirement about four years ago, yeah. so... Very good. Well, I hope you're enjoying your retirement. Oh, I am. Richly earned. Um, Judith, this board is all yours. How are you liking our, our consecutive initials? A um, bit difficult. The first one, I haven't a clue. The second one's Charles Dickens. The third one is Indigo or Inigo Jones. And the last one is Victoria Wood. I'm unsure of the Covent Garden one, so I'm going to go with the last one, which is Victoria Wood. You're going to go for lovely Victoria Wood. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said Victoria Wood. Victoria Wood is absolutely right. 32 still a high score, and you land on it. There we are, joint high scorers. Very well played, Judith. Uh, it's interesting, that Indigo, Inigo Jones thing. It is Inigo Jones. Would have been a lovely answer if, uh, if you'd risked it. It's the best answer on the board, in fact. Inigo Jones would have scored you eight Ooh. points. Um, oh, I was willing you to, to, to go for it. You weren't the only one. Uh, <laughs> 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 the X Factor winner was... Uh, Alexandra Burke. Alexandra Burke. She would have scored you 21, but you did well to avoid uh, Dickens. Uh, he would have scored you 57 points. Thank you very much indeed. We are halfway through the round. Let's have a look at those scores. Uh, 19, best score of the past, Andrew. Hats off to you. Then up to 20, where we find Akif and Shafak. And then joint high scorers. This doesn't happen that often, but uh, Judith and Ian and Catherine and Alison. So Alison and Ian, it's going to be between the pair of you to see who stays and who goes. Remember, it's your last tilt at the pointless final, uh, Catherine and Alison. So good luck. Uh, we're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? OK, let's put seven more clues to people with alphabetically consecutive initials on the board. Here they are. We've got... 
US singer and actor who starred as Bob Wallace in the 1954 film White Christmas, B.C. US jazz singer and first woman to receive a Lifetime Achievement Award at the Grammys, E.F. Oscar winner who starred as Elise in The First Wives Club, G.H. US First Lady from 1961 to 63 with the maiden name Bouvier, J.K. Drummer who joined the Beatles in 1962, R.S. Scottish golfer who captained Europe in their 2002 Ryder Cup victory, S.T. and British fashion designer who opened Let It Rock Shop with Malcolm McLaren in 1971, V.W. There we are. Ian, welcome. Thank you. Good to... Oh, it's just great to have an Ian. <sighs> Tell us all about yourself. I'm also recently retired. And, uh, I retired about a year ago from uh, the sh a shipyard uh, that makes nuclear submarines for the Royal Navy. I mean, that's what Barrow and Furnace is, is, uh, exactly. is best known yeah. to most people for, I yeah. suppose. And there you were, right at the heart of that industry. Well, I was there. Ah. Yeah. Oh. Well, you don't want to be right at the heart of the nuclear <laughs> submarine thing. <laughs> I mean, that sounds person. quite dangerous. But, uh, yeah, there you are. But just a stalwart of the industry. Uh, Ian, who are you going to go for? I'm going to go for the Scottish golfer, and that's Sam Torrance. Sam Torrance says, Ian, no red line. Your joint high scorers. How many people said Sam Torrance? Yes, right. That goes down to 10. That is an excellent answer, Ian. Taking your total up to 42 puts the pressure on Alison somewhat. Very well played, Ian. Yeah, golf's a lovely thing to know about on pointless because people who know about it know everything and people who don't know about it know nothing. So it always scores fairly low. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Shafak, welcome back to Pointers. You Hi. gave us, just before you exited last time, the lowest <laughs> score of the round. So we have high hopes. I think we're entitled to have high hopes. Remind us all about yourself. I am a stay-at-home mum. I'm currently, currently not working, con contemplating getting back into work. When you do, where will you go? Um, so, I have an interest in uh, languages. Mm -hmm. um, I, I speak... I speak a few, I speak four. Come on, what are they? Uh, English? Uh, Urdu. Urdu. Um, Spanish and French. Spanish and French. There we are. Consider that your advert. Very bright. I can vouch for that. OK, Shafak, what are you going to go for? If you can score 21 or less, yes. you're straight through, even at this early stage. OK. <sighs> I think I'm going to go for the US jazz singer. Ella Fitzgerald. Ella Fitzgerald, says Shafak, let's see how many of our 100 people said that. There is your red line. Ella Fitzgerald, absolutely right. Very well done. Down it goes to 17. Superb. 37 is your total. Yeah, career spanning six decades for Ella Fitzgerald. Her first hit was in 1938, a tisket, a tasket. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Alison, this is exciting. Is it? Um, <laughs> oh, I think it could be. Well, it'll have to be. Remind us all about yourself first, though. Yes, I live in St Neitz. I care for my mum now. Um, since caring for her, I've been watching a lot of daytime telly. Um, started sewing because of sewing bee. Um, and I've also been watching the pottery throwdown. Have you, which... You've got an eye on a bit of pottery well, as well. I'm not think? sure if my husband will let me have a kiln. You've got to win the jackpot. Well, Use yes, it, put it towards the no kiln. Choice, will he? And then you get a wheel. How much fun would that I be? I know. Now, there you are on 32. Nine or less is really what we're looking for. At this yeah, stage. my two have gone. Um, I think I'll go for the Oscar winner in the First Wives Club, and I think that's Goldie Horn. Goldie Horn, OK. Here is your red line. Let's see how far down the column we get with Goldie Horn. Goldie Horn is right. Oh, you've done it! Down to six! Look at that, Alison. Very well done indeed. 38 is your total. You are in round two. Well played, Alison. Round two again. Nicely done. <laughs> and now, do you know what Goldie Horn's real name is? Oh, Goldarine Horn. Uh, no, it's just Goldie Horn. That's what she was born. Is it really? Isn't that weird? Goldie... Doesn't oh, it sound like a nice. it sounds like a stage name, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That was her born name, Goldie Jean Horn. Okay, Thomas. Welcome to Pointless. Good to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. Uh, I'm Tom. I'm from uh, Altrincham as well. I work for a property developer in Altrincham, and we're currently in the process of converting an old abandoned pub into some affordable apartments. I mean, that's great that you're doing that. Sad about an abandoned pub. Every time I see an abandoned <laughs> pub, a little bit of me dies. It's, oh. uh, it's not in great shape. It's, I think it's been empty since about 2012, so it's... Uh, oh, a little bit of me comes back to life damp. then. Yeah, no, you don't want to be going in there. <laughs> and you're going to turn it into affordable housing, which, yes. is, which is a great use of resources. Yes. Uh, what are your interests, Thomas? Uh, I like to play a uh, bit, of, bit of golf, um, so that's a bit of a shame that that one's gone. Well, listen, Thomas, this board is all yours. Fill your boots. 22 is what you have to score. 22 or less. 
I'm, uh, I'm not feeling great about the ones left on there and to, to score 22, so I'm just going to go for the last one with Vivian Westwood. Vivian Westwood, says Thomas. There is your red line, Thomas. Let's see if you can get below that with Vivian Westwood. It's absolutely right. Oh, so nearly 32 for Vivian Westwood. Takes her total up to 51. Yeah, I'm lucky. I thought it might score a little bit, uh, a little bit less than that. Uh, the top one, the US singer. Bing actor, Crosby. Bing Crosby. Would have scored you 30. The US first lady. Jackie Kennedy. Jackie Kennedy. Would have scored 38. And the drummer. Ringo Starr. Ringo Starr, or real name Richard Starkey, works as well. 46 points. So the best answer on the board is Goldie Horn, Alison. Well played. There we are. Fantastic. Thank you very much indeed. So we find ourselves at the end of our first round, and Thomas and Andrew, absolutely nothing wrong with your scores there, but. They just happen to be the highest <laughs> in each case. Uh, 51, that's, that's a lovely low score, but I'm afraid it is the highest, so we have to say goodbye, but thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Thomas and Andrew. <laughs> but for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. <laughs> Look at that, we're down to three pairs. Very well done, everybody. We made it through that first round. Alison, that was so spectacular for a number of reasons. Wonderful, our lowest individual score there, just when we needed it. Akif and Shafak, very well done indeed. You were our lowest scoring pair. And just Ian and Judith, well done. Oh, yeah. Just Thank lovely you. to have you here. Our category for round two this afternoon is... Oil production. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many of the world's biggest oil-producing countries as they could. Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any of the world's top 40 crude oil-producing countries, please, apart from the UK, which would be 20th on the list. So any country that uh, produces over 100,000 barrels per day. OK. Catherine. Mm. I think... I'm going to play it a bit safe going first, so I'm going to say United Arab Emirates. UAE. Uh, let's see how many of our 100 people said that. UAE. Yep, that's right. That goes down to 24. Not bad. 24 good for the UAE. Yeah, I thought you were about to play it really safe there, but uh, yeah. no, that's, uh, that's a good answer. The, the eighth most in the world, the UAE. Um, discovered oil there in the 50s. Before that, the economy was fishing and pearls. And now... Yeah. Yeah. There's more money in oil than there is in pearls, it turns out. <laughs> yeah. And fishing, weirdly. Who knew that? Fish oh, oil yeah. as well, if you get into oh, that. yeah. Crack that one. Yeah, oh. Amiga, Omega 3. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, they got fish and oil. I presume that UAE is where we get a lot of our fish oil from. It probably is. It's like perfect. Amazing. It's the perfect it's combination perfect. of the yeah, two industries. Absolutely and if they're right. not, then they should let's set up a fish oil plant in yeah, the UAE. We'll do it. Nice weather. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. Akif, what are you gonna go for? Uh, I think I'm gonna play relatively safe as well and go Libya. Libya, says Akif. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Libya. Libya is absolutely right. 24 is the only score we have on the board at the moment. Libya passes that comfortably down to five. Very well done indeed. Five for Libya. It's a lovely answer. Yeah, over a million barrels a day coming out of uh, Libya. It's just this literally one place ahead of the UK in a crude oil production. Mm. 1959 is when they had their first productive well. Thank you very much indeed. Now then, Judith. I am going to go for Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan. If in doubt, say Kazakhstan. <laughs> yeah. And I doubt, you're probably not even in doubt. I imagine there's no doubt in that in your mind at all. But uh, always a good answer. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan is right. The high score at the moment is 24, the low is 5. We pass the high score. We pass the low. Judith, Kazakhstan, very well done on that par podium. One. That's a terrific answer. Yeah, the, uh, the 12th biggest in the world, Kazakhstan. If you want to know if there is any money in oil, they last they opened a super giant new oil field in uh, 2016. That's what it's called. I don't uh, just uh, call it that myself. Uh, development costs $55 billion. $55 billion. And they um, made it back in the first week. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Good answer, though. Some good yeah, answers they're great. here. They're great. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Well, before we come back down the line, let's just recap on those scores. One is where we find Judith and Ian. Five is where we find Akif and Shafak. Uh, now, Catherine and Alison. This round two thing. <laughs> yes, Alison, 
Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Uh, we're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? OK, Ian, so remember, we're looking for these top oil-producing countries, the top 40. Yeah, they're fairly low scores, so I'm going to go for Venezuela. Venezuela, says Ian. OK, you want to score 22 or less with this, if you possibly can. That's what that looks like. There's your red line. How many of our 100 said Venezuela? Venezuela is right. And you're through. Daddy goes to 10. Very well done indeed. 11 is your total. Yeah, 1.5 million uh, barrels per day, but it's got the, the largest provable oil reserves of any country in the world. It's got over 303 billion barrels of oil uh, in reserve. Isn't that amazing? That's a big seller. Uh, yeah, yeah, isn't it? Well, I think they keep it underground. OK. I think that's, the, uh, I think that's where they're keeping a lot of their oil. Yeah. All right, phew. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, now, Shafak, you are on five. 18 or less is what your target is at this stage. Yeah. OK. <laughs> um, I'm going to go for um, Oman. Oman. Yeah. OK. Here is your red line. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Oman. Oman is right. Well done. Danny goes to 10, takes your total up to 15. Fantastic. I mean, what scoring we're seeing from everyone. This is an absolutely terrific round. Uh, yeah, they discovered oil in the mid-60s in Oman, and they're just below the UK uh, in oil production. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Alison, I'm afraid the writing is on the front of your podium, in fact, as well as the wall. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm afraid you are the high scorers. I'm sorry, but let's have a lovely last answer from you. Well, I'll go for Yemen. Yemen. Says Alison, let's see how many of our 100 people said Yemen. No line for you, I'm afraid, for the reason above. No, oh, bad luck. <laughs> bad luck. But in a way, that's fun. You've gone out in, a, in yeah. a blaze of glory. 100 points, that scores, takes your total up to 124. Yeah, absolutely the thing to do. Try and add some money to the jackpot uh, on your way out. But uh, that's very unlucky. I'm going to go through some of the pointless answers now. There are quite a few. So all of these would have added money to the jackpot. Angola, Azerbaijan, Chad. Uh, Denmark, Ecuador, Malaysia, South Sudan, Thailand, Vietnam, two other pointless answers, Brunei and Congo. Uh, the top five countries, the top five oil producing countries, uh, in fifth, Canada, fourth, Iraq, both of those around about four million barrels a day. Then the top three, all are very, very close to each other, about 10 million, 11 million. Saudi Arabia, number three, uh, Russia, number two, and the United States, the most, nearly 11 million barrels a day. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, so, at the end of our second round, the pair who are heading home with their high score of 124, I'm afraid it has been second round every time, Alison and Catherine. It's been lovely having you here. I'm just sorry you haven't got into the head-to-head -head and beyond. But uh, thanks so much for playing, Alison and Catherine. But for the remaining two pairs, it's now time for the head-to-head. -head. Congratulations, Zakif and Shafak, Ian and Judith. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for the jackpot, which currently stands at £2,250. But before we play the head-to-head, -head, let's see if we can't boost that jackpot by finding some pointless answers. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many... works by Damien Hirst <laughs> as they could. <laughs> Oh, how much fun would that be to make up some works by Damien Hirst? Well, Richard. we have done that. Um, yeah, two works by Damien Hirst that people have heard of, two works by Damien Hirst that no one had heard of, and two that we've made up coming up on the board. See if you can find the two uh, that no one's heard of. £250 for each one. Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our six possible answers. Here they are. Two of these are pointless. It's a wonderful world. Out of sight, out of mind. Pretty vacant. Savage beauty. Sirens of the Lambs, Verity. Akif and Shafak, you will go first. But feel free to think, talk out loud. Pool your resources, because it's yeah, in everyone's it. interest. It's a Sex Pistols album, so probably okay, not... OK, Savage not a... Beauty has some sort of a link to a very famous collection that Alexander McQueen put out, if I'm not mistaken. Which out of you... sight, out of mind. Do you think that's the...? I think that sounds like it... I think it sounds plausible. Yeah, 
I've got no clue. So you I'm think that might be a pointless <laughs> Damien Hirst like, yes, quote? Yes, I think it's sight, a, out of sight, yeah. out of mind. Yeah. Let's put it to the test. Let's see: is out of sight, out of mind, a pointless Damien Hirst work? Well, yes, it is a Damien Hirst work. <laughs> is it going to be one that was pointless? Ah, oh, no, it goes down to one. Oh, it's everything but pointless. OK, Ian and Judith, can you <sighs> truffle out a pointless well, answer? Well, I'm remarkably uninformed on work by Damien Hirst, but you're a bit more artistic, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, but um, I don't know I Damien I think Hirst. we'll go for Sirens of the Lambs. Sirens of the Lambs is either... I mean, it could go so either way, couldn't it? Yeah. Let's find out. Sirens of the Lambs, is it a pointless Damien Hirst work? Oh, well, there we are. Richard. No, no. Uh, yeah, it's a Banksy work, I'm afraid. Sirens of the Lambs. Um, now, let's fill in the rest of this, shall we? Verity is the, the huge sculpture he's got up in Ilfracoon with the, the one with the, the sword that would have scored you a couple of points. Um, I'll give you one of the pointless answers. It's a Wonderful World, one of his very early kaleidoscope. In fact, maybe the first one, kaleidoscope works. So between these two, Pretty Vacant and Savage Beauty, uh, we've already heard Savage Beauty maybe is an Alexander McQueen thing, Pretty Vacant we know is a Sex Pistols thing, but one of those is a Damien Hirst work. Pretty Vacant, let's say. Think Pretty Vacant? Mm. Let's take a look. Absolutely right. Very well done. Pretty vacant. One of his medicine cabinet works. Uh, and you're absolutely right, Savage Beauty, the, uh, the Alexander McQueen um, exhibition at the v &A. Thank you very much indeed. Um, well, bad luck. You didn't find a pointless answer there, but nothing was lost. It's just a bit of fun. <laughs> OK, let's play the head-to-head. -head. The first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot, and you're now allowed to confer. There we are. Make full use of that facility. Our first question this afternoon is all about... Bond actors not playing Bond. Richard. Yeah, five pictures now of Bond actors in other films. We're going to give you the initials of those films and the year they were released, but what are these films, please? Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our five Bond actors not playing Bond. Here they come. We've got A, THFRO, 1990. B, HF, 2007. C, SW, 1997. D. M. M. 2008. And E. L. C. 2004. There we are. Are five Bond actors not playing Bond. Akif and Shafak, you go first. You're our low-scoring pair. Um, what was the A? a. I, I, yeah, go for, go for, let's go for A. All right. Um, so we're going to go for A, uh, The Hunt for Red October. The Hunt for Red October, say Akif and Shafak. Now, Ian and Judith, do you want to talk us through that board? <laughs> uh, B, I think he's hot fuzz. Um, don't know C and E, Jude. No. no. And D is Mamma Mia, so I think by process of elimination we're down to Hot Fuzz B. Hot Fuzz B, say Judith and Ian. So we have The Hunt for Red October and Hot Fuzz. Akif and Shafak went for The Hunt for Red October for A. Let's see how many of our 100 said that. It's right. That goes down to 27. Not bad. Now then, Ian and Judith, you've gone for Hot Fuzz for B. Let's see how many of our 100 people spotted that. Hot Fuzz. Hot Fuzz is right. 27 is what you've got to beat. And you do! Look at that, down it goes to 17. That's fantastic. And it means, after one question, Ian and Judith, you're up 1-0. Lovely answer, yeah, the Simon Pegg, Nick Frost movie. The biggest scorer up there um, is Mamma Mia. That would have scored you a fairly hefty 66. They're very crisp, what they're both wearing. Uh, e, do you know E? Layer cake. Layer good cake. Film. Yep. Layer cake would have scored you nine points. Uh, and the best answer on the board, this one, in fact, a pointless answer. This is a film, there was loads and loads of celebrities in it. I don't remember him in Silent Witness at all. I know. I mean, that's, <laughs> it's a, it, it, um, Silent Witness really screams out at you, doesn't it? Yeah. This was a film, it was a big film, it was based uh, around a group pop group, loads of big celebrity cameos. 
Spice World. Spice World, Spice World is the World. answer, and it's a pointless <laughs> answer. Very well done if you said that at home, Spice World. Thank you very much indeed. OK, now here comes your second question. Akif and Shafak, you have to win this one. Stay in the game, but Ian and Judith get to answer it first, so good luck. Our second question is all about... candles. Richard. Mm, yeah, five clues to things associated in some way with candles here. Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal the five candle clues, and here they come. Multi-branched candelabrum that is a symbol of Judaism. US Brat Pack actress who played Samantha in the 1984 film Sixteen Candles. Singer who had a hit in 1974 with Candle in the Wind. Five-letter word that precedes candle in the name of a well-known firework. And the title of a famous nursery rhyme featuring the butcher, baker and candlestick maker. There we are. Ian and Judith will go first. Do you know what the candle album is? No. It's going to have to be Elton John, isn't it? Yeah. Um, whew, it's going to be the third one down, the singer with a hit in 1975 is Elton John. So you're going for Elton John. Now, Akif and Shafak, do you want to talk us through the rest of that board? So we had Elton John. I think the first one is called a menorah. And the second one is Molly Ringwald which is the one that we're going to go for. You're going to say Molly Ringwald for the second one. OK, so we've got Elton John and Molly Ringwald. Uh, Judith and Ian went for Elton John for Candle in the Wind. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Elton John. <laughs> hey, you -hoo. 87 for Elton John. Akif and Shafak, meanwhile, have gone for Molly Ringwald for uh, Samantha in 16 Candles. How many of our 100 said that? It's right, and unsurprisingly, it beats Elton John up there on 87. Molly Ringwald, that's a great answer. Down goes to four. Very well done indeed. That's how you fight back. <laughs> there we are. OK, after two questions, it's one all. Beautifully done. Great head to head. Um, yeah, there is actually an answer up there that would have beaten Molly Ringwald, which we will get to. Uh, you're right about Menorah. It would have scored you 12 points. The five letter word that precedes candle is Roman. Roman, Roman candle. That would have scored you 56. Now, we all know this nursery rhyme, mm. but what is it called? It's not called the Butcher, the Baker, the Candlestick no, Maker. Not. It's a rubber dub dub, oh, is the answer. It would have scored three tub. points. Three men in a tub. OK, thank you very much indeed. Let's move swiftly on to our third question. Um, this will be the decider. Whoever wins this one goes through to the final place for that jackpot. Best of luck to both pairs. Our third question is all about Shakespeare title characters in alphabetical order, Richard. Yeah, we're going to show you the names now of five title characters from Shakespearean plays, but their names have been written in alphabetical order. What are their names, please? Good luck, both teams. OK, so alphabetical anagrams, essentially, is what these are. And here is our board. Always love reading these. Abkrempt, Ahlmt, Agikner, Bsilmni, and occasionally soon. There we are. Now listen. <laughs> okay, Akif and Shafak, what are you going to go for? Yeah, um, we think we've got all of them. We're going to go for the fourth one down, Cymbeline. Cymbeline for the fourth one down, Cymbeline. Now, Ian and Judith, can you talk us through that board? Not the top one, Hamlet, King Lear and Julius Caesar at the bottom. So I think we're going to go for Julius Caesar. OK, you're going to go for Julius Caesar. So we have Cymbeline and we have Julius Caesar. Akif and Shafak have gone for Cymbeline. Let's see if that is right for the one up from the bottom. How many of our 100 said that? It's right. That's going to be a great answer, isn't it? Look at it, down it goes, it's a pointless answer. I mean, look at that. Wow. That's a pointless answer, it adds £250 to today's jackpot, takes the total up to £2,500. Very, very, very well done indeed. They're very rare pointless answers in the head-to-head. -head. Ian and Judith, um, well, this is a bit of a formality, <laughs> I suspect. Um, but anyway, let's, let's go through it. Um, you've gone for Julius Caesar, which is also an excellent answer. Um, it's going to have its work cut out here, though. Let's see how many of our 100 said it. It's right. And it's also a brilliant answer. <laughs> Look at that. Down it goes to 10. That's such a good score. 
Um, but I'm afraid there's nothing you could do in the face of that symboling. Well done, Akif and Shafak. Uh, very, very well deserved. After three questions, you are, I think, unequivocally through to the final. Very well done. 2-1. Well well Thank you. Yeah, well done. And th those are the best two answers on the board as well. So well played both teams. They're already looking forward to Ian and Judith coming back uh, on the show. It'd be lovely to see you again next time. Let's fill in the rest of these. Uh, Macbeth up the top there would have scored 38. Uh, below that, the biggest scorer uh, is Hamlet, which would have scored you 74. And you're quite right about King Lear as well. And King Lear would have scored 21. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round, Ian and Judith. Oh, you've played so well. Oh, <laughs> as Richard says, can't wait to see you back. I'm sure you'll do fantastically thank then you. as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for playing Ian and Judith. But for Akif and Shafak, it is now time for the pointless final. <laughs> Congratulations, Akif and Shafak. You have fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £2,500. <laughs> Some of the money in that jackpot thanks to you. And you found it in the head-to-head -head round. I mean, that really is... That's a rarity. Well, you know what happens in this last round. You get to choose from the four things we put up on the board. Um, anything you're itching to see up there? Uh, cricket, geography, yes. New Zealand. Pop culture. Yeah. <laughs> OK, well, let's find out. There'll be four things, as I say. You get these. Judy Garland, Sporting 50s, the army on screen, the year 1958. Where do you want to go for? Sporting 50s. Cricket. What do you think? Sporting 50s. Cricket. Judy Garland, that's... It's a stretch. Yeah. I could think of a couple of things. I don't think that's I could think of Sporting 50s, I mean, general sporting the knowledge. The army on screen. Hey, you love... Yeah, well, after the hunt for Red October round, so I don't know. All right, let's know. go Sporting 50s. Let's do sporting it. Sporting 50s. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sporting 50s it is. You'd think there must be a cricket question in there, oh, wouldn't yeah. you? Surely. <laughs> uh, let's take a look, shall we? We are looking for any England cricketer who scored 25 or more Test 50s uh, up to the beginning of September 2020, please. That's nice. We are looking for any woman who's run the Olympic 400 metre sprint final in under 50 seconds in the history of the Olympics or we are looking for any England footballer, so anyone who's been capped for England, um, who has scored 50 or more Premier League goals, please. And that is up to the end of the 2019-20 season. So um, uh, any male England cricketer who scored 25 or more Test 50s, the women running under 50 seconds, or any male England footballer with uh, 50 or more Premier League goals, very best of luck. Thank you very much indeed. Now, as always, you've got up to a minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that jackpot is for just one of your answers to be pointless. Yes. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. So, England cricketers, Paul Collingwood. Paul um, Collingwood, OK. Uh, so, England cricketers, maybe Paul Collingwood. Um, someone, um, like, not any of the big names, so not like... Um, uh, like... Uh, Monty Panasar was a baller, no, wasn't he? he's a baller, yeah. Um, so, I think you're trying to think of some old rounders, so maybe like Flintoff. Darren Goff. Um, Darren no, Goff's he's a not baller, be yeah. I'm oh, sorry. Um, what about. Um, oh, can you think of some football players? Uh, 50 or more Premier League goals. Okay. Um, mm. Thinking right now. Um, Ian Bell. Josh. Emil Heskey? Uh, yeah, yeah. Emil yeah. Heskey? Uh, I'm, I'm Paul Campbell? Let's go, no. no. OK, let's go Ian Bell. Let's go Paul Collingwood. And let's Ten go... seconds. Nasser Hussain. Nasser Hussain. OK. Nasser Okay. OK, it sounds like you've come up with your three answers yeah. and there we are. Your minute is now up. Um, what three answers are you going to give me? Uh, so we're going to go Mark Butcher. These are all going to be cricketers. These are all going to be cricket. Yeah. Okay, Mark Butcher. Mark Butcher. Paul Collingwood. Paul Collingwood. Uh, and uh, Nasser Hussain. And Nasser Hussain. Yeah. Okay. Of those three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer? Uh, gonna hope Paul Collingwood, maybe. Okay, yeah. Paul Collingwood will put last. Least likely to be pointless. Nasser. Nasser probably. Nasser yeah. Hussain, and then we put Mark Butcher in the middle. Yes. OK, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order, and here they are. We have got... Nasser Hussain, Mark Butcher, Paul Collingwood. There they are. They look great up on the board. 
Let's hope they're just as great once we've put them to the 100 on the tower. If one of these turns out to be pointless and wins you that jackpot, 2,500 quid, what would you like to do with it? Aki, if you first. Uh, well, we've had a debate about this before we came on the show. We're just buying, in the process of buying a new house and I think it's going to be going towards a couch. Well, that's nice, to sit on your winnings. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Very nice indeed. <laughs> Shafak, anything you wanted to add to that? Well, I was team sofa, so... It's going to be Sofa. OK, yeah. <laughs> OK, Team Sofa. Right, well, your first answer is Nasser Hussain. In all three cases, we're looking for England cricketers who've scored 25 or more Test 50s. Let's see if Nasser Hussain's right. Let's see if he's pointless for £2,500. How many people said Nasser Hussain? It's right. Nasa Hussain, absolutely right, just has to take us all the way down to zero and you leave with £2,500 and a new sofa. Down it goes. Down, still going down, you've done it. Absolutely. Straight out of the traps there. Nasa Hussain was a pointless answer. Huge congratulations. You're taking home that jackpot of £2,500. That's a win for Team Sofa. <laughs> Beautifully done. It was like we said about uh, golf earlier with cricket. It's one of those ones that, you, you know, there's so many amazing... I mean, that's you're saying being a pointless answer is yeah, crazy, yeah, right? Amazed, yeah. It will not surprise you at all to know that Mark Butcher, Paul Collingwood, also pointless answers as well. Oh, yeah. So it's... Uh, <laughs> okay. Ian Bell, who you mentioned as well, was a pointless answer. Uh, and Shafak, Emil Heskey was a pointless answer for the footballers oh. as well, so there you yeah. go. <laughs> the one time I come through with a sports fact. <laughs> I know. If, if I, yeah, imagine if you hadn't won. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, let's take a look at the pointless answers. Loads of really famous names uh, on all of these lists. There's a beautiful category to pick. Alex Stewart is a pointless answer. Dennis Compton, Michael Vaughan, there's NASA. Uh, Alan Lamb is a pointless answer. Michael. Graham Thorpe, Jack Hobbs, uh, John Edrich, Jonathan Trott, uh, Marcus Triscothic is a pointless answer. Matt Pryor as well. Uh, Robin Smith, Ted Dexter, Tom Graveney, Wally Hammond is a pointless answer too. Very well done if you've got any of those. Uh, now the women to have run under 50 seconds in an Olympic final. Uh, Anna Guevara, Donna Fraser, Marita Koch, you could have had Sanya Richards-Ross, uh, Marie-Jose Perec was a pointless answer, Valerie Briscoe-Hooks as well, Shawnee Miller, loads and loads of pointless answers there. Everyone apart from Cathy Freeman, uh, Christian Horogu, Alison Felix, Ka Catherine Merry and Cathy Cook, everyone else is a pointless answer. Uh, and the footballers, I mean, so many famous names here as well. Beautiful category. Delhi Ali, Peter Crouch, Raheem Sterling, Teddy Sheringham. Um, you could have had Carlton Cole, Chris Sutton, Daniel Sturridge, Danny Murphy, the pointless answer, Darren Bent, Dion Dublin, uh, Gabby Bon Lahore, James Beattie, James Milner, Peter Beardsley, Stan Collamore, Theo Walcott. Loads and loads of pointless answers in all of those. But listen, you deserved it by the way you played to get all the way there. So it was a terrific show and a lovely end to it. Thank you very much indeed. And thanks once again to Thank our you. winning players, Akif and Shafak, who take away today's jackpot of £2,500. Well done. <laughs> Join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>